Hey, what's up guys? And today we're back with yet another video here on Hypixel Skyblock. Today we're gonna to be going over everything that I find important in the update, although I'll have the patch notes linked down in the description if y'all don't wanna check out everything, like literally everything in the update. To start it off, aiming now targets at 70% the height of the hitbox of the mob. So for example, if I bow here, it's gonna hit like around the middle to the top of the zombies rather than the feet before, which was kind of a problem with aiming because it wouldn't really target that well between multiple mobs. It really works quite a lot better now. The next thing that was added is you're able to search the auction house for enchanted books now. So if you go to the auction house auctions browser, you go into the books category, which is consumables, you could search for a book. For example, if we want to search for growth, we could search growth here and now all the different growth will come up here. Whereas before you couldn't actually search for enchanted books and that was actually quite annoying before. So it's really nice that they added that. The next change is one of the biggest changes, which is the personal bank slash piggy bank. Most of y'all know that in the past you were able to withdraw and deposit with the piggy bank because after you deposited, you were able to open the full bank GUI. That is no longer a thing anymore. And also they actually completely changed the purpose of piggy bank. So piggy banks now basically protect your money. What I mean by this is when you die with more than 20,000 coins, your inventory with the piggy bank not broken, like currently mine is actually broken, which is a new thing as well then you won't lose any money, although the piggy bank will become broken. To fix a broken piggy bank, you'll need to add the eight enchanted pork around the broken piggy bank, which is going to basically make enchanted pork's price go up quite a bit now. Now, the staff, knowing that a lot of people are going to be upset about this piggy bank change, have gone ahead and added an upgrade to the personal bank. So you see here, I have a cooldown of two hours on my personal bank. There's actually a way to upgrade that now. So if you see over at spawn, you head left, you see the Coliseum, and over here, we see this little cave. Inside, we have a guy named Guy. I, yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyways, guy over here sells upgrades to the personal bank. The first upgrade costs you 200,000 coins and you need 50,000 emerald collection to be able to buy it. This decreases your personal bank cooldown to one hour versus two hours. Also, I should mention that you can actually completely reset your personal bank timer by after using the personal bank. So say I open the personal bank here, I can go inside the regular bank and if I click on the banker, then my personal bank cooldown will reset. The cool thing is there's actually upgrades past the original from two hours to one hour upgrade. After the one hour upgrade, you can upgrade to a 20 minute cooldown for 1 million coins and 100,000 emerald collection. You do not lose the emeralds though to do this, by the way. And lastly, you can upgrade to the no cooldown personal bank. This costs 5 million coins and you have to have 250,000 emeralds in your collection. Now I do realize this is going to upset a lot of people because not that many people have 250,000 emerald collection or over 6 million coins to throw away at a personal bank upgrade. Although I do feel like this was a good way that they could implement it without people being super mad. Although I do think some people will still be mad that you have to spend over 6 million coins to be able to use a piggy bank, which you were previously able to use without having to spend nearly that much. The next change we're gonna talk about is you're able to change your item pickup settings. So if you click on your Scottbox menu here, you go down to the bottom right here, you see settings. Over here on the right, you'll see player drops. Here you can just click between it. You can pick up everything, uncommon, rare, epic, legendary, or special only, or even nothing. So for example, on my solo, I could have it set that I can pick up literally nothing, which will be good for people like me and 30 virus. I realize that's not a super big change, but it is Pretty nice that they added it. The next change has to do with teleport pads. So you know how teleport pads are beautiful. You see warp to lime. Yes. Well, there's a thing. If you click on it now, you can actually rename the pad. So for example, since lime is our farm, we could be, this is pumpkin farm. After renaming it, you could jump in the portal. So we warp to lime and then it'll say warp to pumpkin farm. So instead of saying warp to red, we can now change whatever name it was, which I think is a really cool addition. And people don't have to have signs above their teleport pads anymore, which is really nice. Moving on to the next change, if we're over here at spawn, Sirius has some new friends, which most of y'all know how to get here. Sirius is the dark auction person, and basically all you do is run across this road all the way back here past the fairy soul pond. Once you get all the way back here, you'll see this greenhouse, and this is where Sirius is for the dark auction. He's usually turn he turns up right here. Now Sirius's new friends are actually in this house next to it. There's Shifty and Lucius. When you click on Shifty, there is a new shop where you can buy Tutti Fruity Flavored Poison, Dr. Paper, and Slayer Energy Drink. The best of these is going to be the Slayer Energy Drink because you can add to critical potions to get extra magic find, which is pretty nice. The Dr. Paper adds 75 absorption hearts to potions that give you absorption, so that's pretty nice. And the Tutti Fruity Flavored Poison adds 5% to the damage of archery potions. Lucius over here says, Pissed, listen here, not too loud. My cousin Sirius leads an organization. It's a business. 
auction these sweet items. He regularly runs events at a nearby house, buy a few items from Sirius and come back. So you have to buy a couple items from the Dark Auction House. I haven't actually done that yet, although that storyline could progress into some sort of quest or something. So I think that's pretty cool, although I obviously haven't done that yet since the update just happened like an hour ago. While we're discussing Sirius, the Dark Auctioneer, if you come to the Auction House now, you can search Wither. In the Talisman category, you can now find the Wither Artifact. The Wither Artifact reduces the damage taken from Withers by 20%, and it's an epic Talisman. As far as I know, that's the only item that's been added to the Dark Auction, and right now it's going for a ridiculous amount on the regular auction, so I can imagine in the Dark Auction it's going for at least 5 million coins, if not more. Once there's a lot more in the auction though, it'll probably go down to somewhere around where the Ender Artifact is, which is another item that you have to get from the Dark Auction. Now that we've discussed all the Dark Auction changes, there's been quite a few Slayer changes. To start it off, Slayer bosses are now guaranteed to drop their regular drop. For example, with the Tarantula Broodfather, you're guaranteed to get Tarantula Web. But they can also drop Rare and Rune Drops separately, meaning all can drop from one kill. For example, you can get Tarantula Web, Toxic Arrow Poison, and a Rune all from the same kill. This is the big change because before if you got Toxic Arrow Poison or Bite Rune or any of these, you wouldn't be getting Tarantula Web. So basically, you're going to be getting a lot more Tarantula Web now, and you won't be so sad when you get the 20% drop, for example, Tarantula Arrow Poison. And you definitely won't be sad that you got Toxic Arrow Poison anymore as well because, guess what, a stack now sells for 128,000 coins, or individually per piece, 2,000 coins per. This is the same thing with Foul Flesh and Hamster Wheels. Hamster Wheels selling for 20k per, and Foul Flesh selling for 25k per. Also, Foul Flesh has been changed into a Fuel, which can increase the speed of your minion by 90% for 5 hours as well. So basically, you won't be sad at all when you get Hamster Wheels, Foul Flesh, or Toxic Arrow Poison, because they're just going to be free money. So this is a massive change to Slayer, because basically, all Slayers are pretty much profitable now. Which means you might as well do Slayers, because you're not going to lose money, and you'll unlock cool items, so basically, Slayer OP now. Also in Slayer, they've added the Pooch Sword, which has a base damage of 120, a strength of 20, a speed of 5, and its ability is it deals plus 1 damage per 50 max hearts, you receive minus 20% damage from wolves, and gain 150 strength against wolves. Also, it's a legendary sword. Basically, you could compare this to the Reaper Falchion for Zombie Slayer, but even better than that, probably. So if you're trying to solo tier 4 wolves, this is almost going to be a necessity, and I could see a lot of people getting this. Also in Slayer changes, you can now call Maddox every 1 minute from the bat phone rather than 3 minutes, which is a big change because you used to be waiting for Maddox to be able to answer your phone calls. And if you're wondering how to get a Maddox bat phone, it's from Wolf Slayer 3. Also thought I should mention that Tarantula Minions can now drop Iron Ingots as well, although that wasn't in the patch notes, I noticed a lot of people were saying that that is now a thing. And basically that makes Tarantulas really worth it because the crafting price really isn't bad for Tarantula Minions, seeing as it's 80 Tarantula Web and an Enchanted Spider Spider-Eye, which I understand is a decent bit, but it's nowhere near the cost of like a Revenant Minion, and now you get Iron from it as well, so Tarantula Minion's definitely going to be really good Minion to have now. In the last of the Slayer changes, there are now Slayer Leaderboards, which you can only actually check if you are a veteran slayer player which basically means you have to be tier 6 in a certain skill to be able to check for example i can't check my revenant horror or sven pack master level because i'm not tier 6 in either of those but i am tier 6 in tarantula and the last change we're going to be discussing is they added co-op kick after 35 days of an activity which basically means you have the ability to kick people if they've been absent for more than 35 days although you do not have to so if you want to do this you click on your skybank menu go to profile management Go to the profile you want to do it on. For example, if I want to do it on my co-op, I go here, and then bottom right you see kick a player. So if I want to start kicking someone, I click on this, and then for example, if I wanted to kick GURFs, I click to create kick vote. It tells me QS9 is on a pixel and Zach's on a pixel, and all co-op partners except the target must be online in order to act initiate a kick. Keep in mind, they do have to be gone for 35 days, so if they log on at all during that period, you can't do it. Anyways guys, that'll be the end of the video. If y'all enjoyed, consider liking it, it helps promote the video and helps me out a lot. And if you're new here, maybe consider subscribing for more content. Anyways, I'll see y'all in the next one. Peace guys. Kids screaming in the cradles, profanities. I see the world through ice covered in ink and bleach. Cross.